Hello everyone, we will uh, continue with our lecture series, we are at uh, number 30 today and uh, continuing with our previous lecture, uh, we will uh, I mean where we talked about applications of linear control design for aircraft control primarily from classical control point of view. We will continue this lecture from modern control point of view primarily. Okay. So, this, this lecture uh, is uh, organized something like this, uh, we will first have a kind of a brief review of modern control design for linear systems especially, we have all studied about that. So, uh, just to kind of recapitulate what all you are talking here that way. And then this uh, automatic flight control system especially from modern or time domain designs actually that way. So, brief review of uh, control design uh, or modern control design for linear system is something like this, you have uh, uh, this is state space representation is, is the backbone of modern control design. Uh, so, we need the system dynamics in this form. The first is if, if, it, if it is given in, the, in the, this form, it is non-linear system and uh, whereas, the linear system or rather linearized systems are given something like this. So, in this lecture, we will continue uh, primarily on linear system tools and techniques actually. So, stability of linear system first of all, uh, 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 when you talk about stability, we do not talk about uh, control input per se. So, we talk, uh, will only concentrate on x dot equal to a x actually. Now, the question is uh, can we conclude about the nature of the solution without solving the system model. So, we do not want to, to solve the system model and then infer it actually. Fortunately, the answer turns out to be yes and it is all given by the location of the eigenvalues actually. So, by definition eigenvalues of uh, A matrix are known as poles of the system and the nature of the solution is governed only by the location of the poles actually. So, if all, po all poles are in the left hand side, the system is stable, otherwise it is unstable. If one pole is in the right hand side, the system is un unstable, that is that is the conclusion actually. So, uh, then con coming to controllability, I mean before we design any control system, we need to check about controllability and for linear time invariant systems, the test is very straightforward. So, we just formulate this uh, controllability matrix uh, and if the rank of this matrix is n, then the system turns out to be controllable. Uh, the whole idea is if the system is not controllable, there is no point in uh, trying our, I mean kind of wasting our effort till in trying to design a control system, okay, because that, that will not be possible actually. So, as an example, if you have this kind of a system uh, x dot equal to a times x plus b times u, then uh, it is very straightforward. C b is something like this, you, this is b and this is a times b, okay. then that turns out to be like that. So, if you, if you see the determinant, determinant is minus 4 plus 2 sort of thing, so it is not 0. So, the rank of uh, C b turns out to be 2 and hence the system is controllable, that is how we check controllability and similarly, we will also talk about observability, where uh, the observability matrix turns out to be like that. Again, you uh, proceed, uh, proceed with the similar test, so that if the rank of the observability matrix is n, the system is observable. So, uh, then as an example, uh, here we require a C matrix, it is a property between C and A. So, we first have C transpose, C transpose is 1 0 and then A transpose and then C transpose again. So, that turns out to be like that, where rank of uh, this matrix is, is 1 because the uh, 1 row is completely 0. So, the system is certainly not observable. So, that is the way to kind of uh, go ahead and check controllability observability. Then uh, there is the idea of uh, closed loop system dynamics. So, the, these are all uh, when something is given like this, it is uh, open loop system for say and then if you if you come up with a control design u in the form of state feedback uh, in other words u equal to minus k x then this leads to the closed loop system dynamics as x dot equal to a minus b k times x. So, this a c l which is a minus b k it turns out to be like uh, your closed loop system matrix. So, the whole idea of control design is uh, if the system is, uh, is unstable or something like that, you can uh, certainly make it stable by selecting an appropriate gain matrix k. And even if it is a system is stable, if you really uh, do not like uh, the characteristic or the response of the system and things like that, then you can uh, alter the eigenvalues uh, by designing a control system uh, in this manner actually. All right. So, we will see this application uh, in this class actually, how do you alter the eigenvalue or closed loop uh, pole locations actually. Then the, uh, the pole placement control design we studied, the objective was uh, 
something like that, uh, the, the, something like this. The, the closed loop poles would lie at uh, some specified locations mu 1 to mu n, okay. So, which are uh, which are certainly the desired locations. Mu 1 to mu n is something that, that is desired, we want to place the poles there. And then uh, the difference between uh, you know, this one and classical approach is uh, not just the dominant pole, but all poles needs to be placed actually. So, we should be able to kind of uh, no need of approximating it like a second order system and things like that. There is no concept of dominant pole, every pole will, we can be able to alter actually. A necessary sufficient condition turns out that the system needs to be state controllable. Okay, so, then this uh, what is the philosophy of pole placement control design that we studied? Suppose there are these are the uh, kind, uh, kind of uh, desired pole locations, then certainly the, the right hand side part of it is the desired characteristic polynomial. And this is this turns out to be the desired, uh, I mean this closed loop uh, system matrix A minus B k. So, left hand side is the characteristic polynomial uh, after designing a k matrix gain actually. So, this two characteristic polynomial if you if you equate and then uh, collect the various powers of, of, of S and then, then try to go equate them uh, and things like that, then you will be able to solve for the gain matrix. And this turns out to be like uh, not uh, very convenient method, but if n, n turns out to be less than equal to 3 sort of thing, uh, maybe 4 to the maximum, then we can uh, certainly go ahead and do equate these polynomials very straightforward manner. And then you can we should be able to solve this k1, k2, k3 directly basically. Okay. So, for, for, so as a method, what you do? I mean, first you check controllability, and then suppose it's n equal to three, then you select a gain matrix like k1, k2, k3. Also remember this is this is a row vector because what you are talking here in pole placement control design is primarily a single input case. With a multi, multiple input, you have to do some control. I mean, allocation and all that actually to convert it to an equivalent uh, single input uh, system then you to, then you go ahead and apply this and then allocate the controls appropriately all right so if it is n equal to 3 then you select that like that k k1 k2 k3 sort of thing and then substitute the gain uh, matrix in the result characteristic polynomial so you will equate the two and uh, then collect the various powers of s and then solve for k1 k2 k3 actually once you get that, we get you got the gain matrix, and once you get the gain matrix, we have got the controller actually e equal to minus kx. So that's the way we we proceed. And this is not a very convenient uh, approach of if uh, for higher order systems. If n is greater than four and things like that, things uh, will be very messy. So there are alternate approaches uh, available, and one of that is uh, Basgura approach. So, this uh, in, the, in this approach what we studied before is something like this, uh, like first obviously we need to check controllability anyway and uh, for, uh, we, we need to form this, uh, this characteristic polynomial for the open loop A matrix actually. So, the like open loop A matrix turns out to be like that, then that will define various uh, A's actually that may A1, A2, A3 up to A n actually that way. Then we have to find the transformation matrix T equal to M times W, where M is nothing but the controllability matrix and W uh, we discussed in a way this is given in a specified format containing this, this coefficients A1, A1, A2 up to An actually. So, that is a matrix which will, which will utilize this, uh, this coefficients A1, A2 up to An actually that way and M is already available to us, so that is a controllability matrix. Now, we have the desired characteristic polynomial mu 1 to mu 1 are the desired pole locations. So, if you multiply this uh, polynomial, you will get this alpha 1 or 2 up to alpha n and hence uh, we can determine this alpha actually. That means, alpha 1, alpha 2 and all we can collect from there. Now, ultimately that the required uh, state feedback gain matrix turns out to be like that. So, where T is, is computed that way, T equal to m times w basically. So, that is the approach uh, that we studied before um, method 2. And then there is a even more straightforward method which, is, which, is, which we discussed that is Ackermann's formula. Okay. So, Ackermann's formula is uh, I mean it is kind of very straightforward. The what you see here is controllability matrix. So, you take inverse of that and then this is a clearly a row vector defined prop I mean all zeros and the last element being 1. And then this phi a and phi a is defined as something like this and uh, that term that comes from Keller Hamilton theorem and things like that. If you remember we have discussed all the details there. The, that, that class. So, uh, this phi a uh, is actually utilizes this polynomial again okay. and this uh, a is uh, uh, sorry the, not this polynomial, but uh, this alpha polynomial. Okay. 
So, this phi s will come out from this polynomial alpha 1, alpha 2 and all are, are defined from this polynomial. So, this phi a is defined in terms of that actually. Okay. So, this is a matrix polynomial defined that way. So, utilizing this formula we should be able to compute the gain matrix directly as well. Okay. So, these are the three methods that we studied for, uh, for control design and equivalently these three methods can also be used for observer design that also we have studied there actually that, that point I, I am not going to discuss that part here because our, uh, our goal in this class is to design control systems primarily. So, another alternative we studied before is, uh, is LQR design a linear quadratic regulator design and that is where we discuss this, uh, this kind of a quadratic performance index uh, uh, containing a terminal penalty and a path penalty and then the path constraint is, is a linear system dynamics and the boundary conditions uh, initial condition was known to, known to us. Final time was fixed, uh, but final state was free sort of thing. So, then uh, we went ahead and, uh, and augum, I mean uh, followed the procedure of uh, formulating an augmented cost function j bar which is uh, j plus uh, lambda within the integral lambda transpose uh, this x dot minus x plus u and things like that. Then we defined an Hamiltonian and, and carried out for the algebra. So, this is uh, what we did. So, terminal penalty turns out to be like that, Hamiltonian turns out to be like that. So, and then it leads to this, uh, these three famous conditions, this uh, state, co-state and optimal control equations. So, state equation was already known to us, uh, I mean this is, uh, this comes from here and the co-state equation is lambda dot equal to minus del s by del x. So, if you carry out this, uh, this Hamiltonian is already available, h is already available. So, minus del s by del x if you carry out, it turn out to be minus q x plus a transpose lambda. An optimal control equation turns out to be del s by del u equal to 0 and that gives you like u equal to minus r inverse b transpose lambda. The whole problem was to get lambda. So, if you get lambda then uh, your control is already ready. So, what we did is uh, we, we approximated this uh, I mean the not approximated I mean the, the, the theory also is there that will tell you that lambda turns out to be p I mean a linear function of x. So, we took as uh, lambda equal to uh, this uh, p times x basically. Okay. So, if you if you see lambda equal to p times x and then uh, lambda f turns out to be like uh, s f s x f sort of thing. So, uh, starting from lambda equal to p x, so we carried out this uh, derivative both sides that lambda dot equal to p dot x plus p times x dot and then x dot you substitute that and then u substitute this one and lambda substitute that. All these uh, steps carried further and then lambda dot also this, this expression where lambda is also like p times x. So, if you do all the substitution and that and then try to figure out what is going on, it leads to this, uh, this Ricard equation actually. Okay. So, this Ricard equation if it is solved then it uh, should be able to get a p and that p will be used for lambda and then once you get for lambda then we got this minus r inverse b transpose p times x and hence r inverse b, trans b transpose p will turn out to be the gain matrix actually. So, but, uh, but for solving lambda we I mean solving for p we also see the boundary condition and this boundary condition what you see here if you utilize that you will get this kind of a boundary condition. So, in principle you can start from here and then uh, using this uh, this differential equation you can uh, can proceed backwards and then uh, store the gain I mean store the p matrix and uh, at appropriate point of time you can select that particular p matrix and then uh, compute your gain matrix which is nothing but this uh, r inverse. Uh, gain matrix is nothing but r inverse uh, b transpose p and then u will turn out to be minus k x and that is how we uh, we kind of compute the gain matrix and the controller. However, this uh, differential equation propagation and all is not uh, very comfortable and then uh, we do not know suppose we do not know t f uh, a priori then there is a problem for that. But then there is a great theorem uh, which tells us that for linear time invariant systems uh, uh, if T f goes to infinity and then q and r are also constant matrices, then p dot approaches to 0 for all time actually. Okay, so, that is the theorem by equal 1 basically. So, this, uh, this degenerates this algebraic, I mean differential Ricard equation to algebraic Ricard equation and hence if we solve this one time, we are done actually. Okay. So, if we solve it, uh, but remember this is also a nonlinear equation that because p appears uh, both left and right here. So, it will invariably lead to uh, a number of uh, nonlinear Okay, algebraic equation that we need to solve and what we really need to solve is a positive definite p that is what ultimately gives us stabilizing controller actually. So, you can eliminate all possible all other possibilities and select a p which is positive definite actually. Okay, so, that is what is written here positive definite solution of Ricard matrix is needed to obtain a stabilizing controller. It certainly I mean 
if all the conditions are met like a b is controllable and then q is positive semi definite r is positive definite and things like that then certainly it is possible to get a positive definite solution from this matrix this uh, algebraic Ricard equation. So, once you I mean the summary of uh, this infinite time regulator problem is like that. So, we have a steady equation x dot equal to x plus b u a and b are constant matrices and then cost functions are uh, something is something like this when q and r are also constant matrices q is positive semi definite r is positive definite. The solution turns out to be like uh, the very straightforward. you just solve this uh, algebraic Ricard equation get a p get a solution for p matrix and then you have this u equal to minus r inverse b transpose b where r inverse b transpose b turns out to be the gain matrix k actually. The, the beauty of this LQR over, uh, over pole placement design is you really do not need to bother about whether you have a single controller or multiple controller. Okay. So, if it is uh, in other words is this it is equally valid for multiple input without uh, doing any further manipulation actually. But uh, pole placement design we need the theory is very nice only if you have a uh, only if you have a single input system. The moment it is multiple input you need to do this control allocation and things like that and then you may lose some of the beauties there actually that way. All right. So, these are all the control design techniques that we have studied before uh, as just as a recapitulation sort of thing. So, now let us go and see what way we can utilize this uh, this thing for flight control systems actually and especially we will see for uh, time domain design. So, last class we we also saw that uh, application of automatic flight control systems can be many uh, I mean applications of control theory for automatic flight control system that is what you are talking here and then uh, largely you can categorize them as uh, the 3 4 categories and one of that is stability augmentation system. So, what we do is stability enhancement here and as well as something very important thing what we do is handling quality enhancement. Stability enhancement is something like if the system is uh, kind of unstable or close to instability and things like that we certainly want to make it uh, behave as if it is a stable plant by, uh, with the help of uh, feedback actually. Handling quality is something like uh, what the pilot perceives to be and we should be able to give that actually. Okay. That means, if the response is too fast then the pilot get may also get uh, confused actually. So, it may not be uh, as the too fast response are not uh, very nice. At the same time there is this non minimum phase behavior and things like that are also very confusing to the pilot actually. Okay. We also remember that when you have a tail control flight vehicle and most of our aerospace vehicles are tail control anyway, it excites uh, this con this uh, closed loop response in, in a way that uh, it certainly leads to non minimum phase sort of behavior actually. So, that response needs to be minimized as much as possible. Then handling quality also discusses about like uh, okay, what kind of settling time you should have, how much percentage you should uh, percentage over should you should have and things like that. So, in a nutshell what it tells is uh, like uh, the before we I mean if the pilot gives some input or something the uh, the system or the aircraft should respond the way the pilot is comfortable actually. So, that way he can handle the aircraft in a good way so, that is called uh, handling quality. And mathematically speaking, these uh, these Eisen values of the closed loop matrix should satisfy uh, the, uh, the the desired locations and all, which will uh, lead to this uh, desired uh, response characteristics uh, like uh, percentage over to or so over certain and settling time and things like that. So stability enhancement is just to enhance the stability. I mean. Uh, there is nothing to do with exact pole locations and things like that even though you can uh, you can even talk about that uh, there itself. Okay. But handling quality goes little more than that okay. they tells okay, exactly the I want some sort of a response from the system okay. and uh, then cruise control systems are also um, a very important application of control theory. This is actually takes out large amount of load from the pilot actually for, exa for example, if it uh, goes for a long uh, duration flight and things like that the pilot cannot con concentrate on controlling the, the vehicle at each instant of time. So, for uh, for uh, small jobs uh, it is it is good to do automate that process and that actually elevates the load from the pilot quite a lot actually because if you see commercial aircraft for example, for large part of the trajectory may be about more than 90 percent of the time they just go on a cruise control mode actually. So, unless there is a warning sort of thing pilot does not play much of a role actually like warning in the sense of uh, 
let us say something drastic happens, uh, the, some uh, big disturbance comes or there is a collision course and things like that with another aircraft. So, unless those, uh, those type of warning situation comes, uh, it is actually the, the aircraft goes in a cruise control mode. And this cruise control has also come, uh, as I told in the last class, to the, to the automobile industry already basically. Okay. Anyway, the cruise control comes uh, in a variety of forms and first of all, we, uh, we can discuss about attitude control. That means, to maintain pitch roll uh, and yaw heading, I mean pitch uh, roll and heading angles basically. So, we can just maintain certain angle and then uh, rest of the things will be taken care. For example, if you, if your aircraft takes off, then we need to maintain certain angle, pitch angle theta with respect to the horizontal, then the aircraft will go climb actually. So, that is uh, that kind of uh, attitude control. Then we also have this altitude hold, that is what happens in, uh, in uh, long duration uh, flight uh, cruise control sort of thing. You just to go climb to a certain altitude like 10 kilometer to 12 kilometers like that and then hold that altitude and hold the heading also. And the particular, is if you know the direction in which you are going and you, you know the altitude where you want to go and things like that, then uh, combining these two attitude control and altitude hold, we should be able to come up with a nice uh, cruise control. And take uh, the, the automatic control system take uh, takes over the pilot control actually. So, then uh, that is what the cruise control system all about. Speed control is, uh, is also important because the drag variation and other things when, in the, when you discuss, then automatically it should maintain certain uh, certain speed actually. Okay. So, that is where this, uh, this has come to automobile industry, whether you climb uphill or, or downhill and things like that, your so vehicle should go at a constant velocity, constant speed actually. So, that is uh, where you, um, you manipulate your brakes or manipulate your, uh, your gas pedal or that uh, oscillator or something. So, you can maintain your constant speed actually. So, these are the application of cruise control and then landing aids also it is uh, I mean possible and especially this, uh, this uh, when you discuss this uh, flight trajectory, it consists of uh, three parts. Uh, first is like uh, climb up, then, uh, then go on a cruise mode for a long time and then land actually. And after this, the main three segments, uh, the landing turns out to be the most crucial part of it, where most of the accidents do happen there. So, that is where a lot of care has to be taken, because your vehicle is subjected to a lot of, uh, I mean this uh, harsh forces moments and all when it uh, tries to land there actually. And any amount of uh, errors and all can be very penalizing there actually. So, even if it touches, uh, if your wing touches the ground as little bit, because your velocity is so high, the momentum turns out to be, or the energy content turns out to be so high that the wing will break actually. So, there are, this is a very punishing uh, kind of uh, trajectory and that is where the automatic control turns out to be most useful uh, in the loop. Even though you cannot uh, completely automate uh, in the sense, there are a lot of work going on in, in that direction, how do you do complete automatic landing, especially in the in the UAV side for, for example, because no pilot in the, no pilot is there in the loop anyway basically. And even if there is a pilot, it can only control the vehicle remotely, the remote control vehicle and all that. But uh, <coughs> uh, truly speaking, the UAV should land automatically actually. Uh, and when you try to do that, there are variety of issues there uh, uh, and a lot of challenges there actually. But in a regular sense, uh, what is used uh, already actually is uh, what is called as alignment control that uh, your vehicle has to align with the runway first. Then there is a large segment in which it will, it will simply glide actually, that means it will simply try to come down in a straight line manner sort of thing. But in a very, when the aircraft is very close to the ground, you cancel that straight line path and go for exponential path actually. So, the touching will be very smooth sort of thing and that is what normally birds do. So, this glide slope and flare uh, turns out from observing simply, I mean simply observing birds actually. It will come down on a straight line and then take a little uh, nice maneuver upwards, so that uh, the rest of the path become exponentially uh, smooth uh, sort of thing actually. And there are other applications uh, um, imp very important also that is uh, something called automatic path planning and guidance actually. That is where optimal control theory has, uh, is coming into a very, I mean it, it plays a very uh, important role actually. So, if you, if you really talk about automatic path planning, that means it, the vehicle should uh, plan its path automatically, let us say point A point, point to point B to C to D and then come back and in between also there are obstacles and things like that it has to avoid. And if it is a, in, a, in a collision mission sort of thing like a war mission sort of thing, it should not only find the target, but it should go and collide with the target that way. So, there are many important, important class of problems for, for which this, uh, this uh, automatic flight control system turns out to be very useful actually. So, these are largely the things that we discuss here, I mean the rest being the guidance and path planning. 
uh, what we concentrate here is not everything in detail, okay, but something like uh, some typical ideas of uh, stability augmentation system followed by some examples actually. And similarly, like a uh, small idea of like cruise control system, how do you do it, how do you mechanize it actually. Okay. So, once you have some ideas there, other things are extensions of those ideas anyway. So, that is uh, that is where I uh, will take you through this class actually. So, let us talk about stability augmentation system first. All right. So, so when you do this uh, stability augmentation system, first of all note that uh, uh, inherent stability of an airplane depends on the aerodynamic stability derivatives. So, that is the stability characteristics actually. Okay. For example, it, it all depends on the like wing shape, it depends on the length of the thing, it depends on the body shape, it depends on the I mean kind of what angle of attack you are flying and depends on the incident angle. I mean many things it is it is part of the like uh, design variables and all that actually. So, in the design stage itself it needs to be done, it needs to be optimized actually. So, and many times you remember that uh, we may not need a stable aircraft all the time, that is also true actually. For commercial aircraft, so we need a stable aircraft, but for fighter airplanes and all we purposefully need an unstable aircraft for advent drag, I mean uh, drag minimization number one and then we discuss about uh, like uh, higher maneuverability and things like that. Okay. So, it, it reduces the induced drag. So, that means, if, even if you turn at high speed, the drag build out does not happen. I, even if you maneuver at a high g, in other words, high turns and all the sharp turns, then the drag build out does not become very high basically that way. So, that is that is where you need this uh, and the response time also becomes smaller actually. That is what is crucial in, in war games and all that. So, we do not necessarily need a stable aircraft, but once you have unstable aircraft, certainly pilot cannot handle it uh, manually. So, we need to have a uh, kind of a closed loop uh, system partly at least, uh, where the the closed loops would behave in a stable way actually. Okay. But I mean anyway coming back to that, uh, this inherent stability of an airplane depends on the aerodynamic stability derivative and also largely remember, if a, it also depends on C g to C p location basically. If the C g is in front of C p, so that means, center of gravity is in front of center of pressure, then it turns out to be a stable aircraft, okay, longitudinally stable aircraft basically. And if it is otherwise, it is a it's longitudinally unstable aircraft basically. Okay. Anyway, magnitude of the derivatives affect the response behavior of an airplane by altering the Eisen values, certainly obviously actually. Okay. The derivatives means the stability derivatives for a C m alpha, C n delta like that, those are called stability derivatives. So, aerodynamic stability derivative affects the response behavior, behavior of an airplane by altering the Eisen values. Suppose you, you have a different value, somehow you alter the values there, then obviously it will reflect in the Eisen value shift actually. Okay. So, derivatives are function of the flying characteristic which change during the enter flight envelope as well, because these are not constant numbers, they keep on uh, changing uh, as functions of uh, angle of attack and functions of Mach number, functions of uh, I mean dynamic pressure and things like that, but largely they are functions of uh, altitude uh, and, uh, and angle of attack primarily actually. Angle of attack, Mach number and to some extent this dynamic pressure, okay. so dynamic pressure means it is a function of altitude anyway. And also remember the control systems uh, which provide artificial stability to an airplane okay, uh, having undesirable flying characteristics are commonly called as stability augmentation system. So, what, what does it mean? So, the system in the, I mean by itself is not stable, but by designing a control system you are making that closed loop plant stable actually. Okay. So, that is like artificial stability actually. So, the moment the control system stops working the only re, only option for the in this class of problems is to eject and go. I mean the pilot can never uh, aim to stabilize the plant manually. Okay, so, that way then the, the, the aircraft may crash, uh, but if you if it ejects and goes and the, the, the pilot life can be saved. I mean that is the reason why this fighter aircraft so will have ejection seats and all that actually. Okay. For whatever reason if the control system does not work, there is a no hope of making the system stable again. So, it has to just uh, get out of that actually that way. All right, what is the philosophy? The idea is extremely simple, which is a, a clever application of control theory rather, I will put it that way. So, let us see this. The original system is something like this, x dot equal to x plus b u okay. and the control input u, what goes there to the plant, we will kind of visualize that as two components actually. One is the automatic feedback component okay, 
and the other one is pilot input component. Okay. And uh, this automatic feedback component let us try to design it in this way minus k times x and u p can be designed based on the overall plan that is a different issue actually again. But forgetting u p we will just keep that u p as it is then what happens uh, this x dot if you just substitute that u as u a plus u p and this u a is nothing but minus k x then what happens x dot equal to a minus b k times x plus b times u p. So, that means instead of visualizing this plant that to x dot equal to a x what I am visualizing is x dot equal to a c l x okay, c l is a minus b k plus b times u p. Suppose and then this uh, u p is pilot input anyway. So, uh, then if you really want to make an automate uh, everything then this u p also needs to be designed in an automatic sense. Okay. But in general if the pilot gives command through sticks and buttons and things like that then this is where it will uh, it will come and affect the the system which is already in the form of ACL x dot equal to ACL x plus b, b times u p actually. Okay. So, part of the control is already designed automatically designed built in actually okay. and that is what it will give stability behavior to the system and the rest of the things will uh, will come from u p and then u p will be given directly by the pilot actually. Okay. So, what is the and that is what the stability augmentation system design is all about actually. So, this A was no, does not have good stability behavior, but by partly automatic um, I mean partly making it in operate in an automatic way we are actually giving the desired step desired curve, I mean this stability behavior to the system actually okay. and this desired stability behavior can also accommodate this uh, this uh, what is that handling qualities and all that actually okay. that is how we, we design that actually. So, what is the philosophy? Philosophy is to design k this gain k such that a c l should have desired eigen values is as simple as that actually. So, once you realize this you can all uh, bring in our uh, earlier idea of either pole placement or LQR or whatever it is actually that way to design this closed order uh, I mean this closed loop plan. And uh, okay, for example, when the uh, I mean there is another utility of this kind of approach. For example, when your aircraft is getting uh, designed in other words you have not gone for extensive flight testing and all that we do not know how this aircraft is going to behave in air actually. So, what people normally do is uh, you design a, a artificial gain k in such a way that A C L will have characteristics of a of a known aircraft already that which is already flown on many times actually. So, that way uh, and later this will not be required and once the aircraft has it I mean once you study the aircraft in a good way how it hap happens what it happens and things like that you can uh, you, you do not need that. So, what you do initially you design a k matrix in such a way that it will the once the you make the switch on that means once you ex activate this it the same aircraft will behave like in another aircraft actually. So, the pilot can think oh I am flying that other one that I am comfortable with actually. Okay, so, the response characteristics will will become like that. Then once it is like intermittently you can take out this uh, this loop and then study the, the natural behavior how it happens and with the with your own control design which is already in place. And if you are comfortable well get your get yourself trained if you are not comfortable again close this again back. So, that you can get that aircraft back like the another aircraft actually. So, that that goes as a very handy tool for training pilots in a new aircraft actually. Okay. So, that is uh, and there are many examples uh, practically that is very useful technique basically. So, that means uh, to all right. So, that is uh, that is what we do that actually all right. So, philosophy is like this you design part of the control in automatic sense. So, that you can alter the response characteristics that is all it means actually. Okay. So, problem is what now is with the problem boils down to determine the feedback in k that produces the desired stability characteristics actually. And stability augmentation design can obviously have longitudinal longitudinal uh, manner. I mean that longitudinal stability augmentation design, and lateral stability augmentation design. Okay. And as I told before, uh, this handling quality improvement okay, can also be done using the same philosophy. Okay. Handling handling quality is nothing but how do you feel the the response characteristics? And nothing but the eigenvalues of the ACL actually. Now we have studied before that the flight dynamics in longitudinal mode can be written like that. So, out of these uh, 9 variables on flat earth model we can uh, separate that into 4 plus 4 mainly actually and then you discuss about uh, this u dot I mean in a, in a linearized manner the height does not play so much of an important role there. 
So, out of this 9 equation you can reduce it to 8 and that 8 is divided into like 4 plus 4 and this 4 plus 4 uh, this 4 variables u, w, q and theta is something uh, comes under the bracket of longitudinal dynamics actually. So, this longitudinal dynamics is largely dictated by thrust manipulation as well as elevator manipulation. And in a, in a linearized manner we, we assume that the thrust is not manipulated, thrust is remains constant because that cannot be manipulated in a fast way. Okay, thrust can only be manipulated very slowly, so we do not need of uh, kind of uh, taking into account when you discuss about a linearized model actually. So, this is the in general this is the linearized model in longitudinal mode actually. Okay. So, what you are doing here this delta delta E I mean this is this delta notations I have kept it purposefully and this book also in the, okay, the largely this material is also taken from this book like last lecture it is a very good book a lot of details are there in there actually. But anyway, so the like the book I also thought I will keep that delta notation because this delta when, when you discuss about linearized model it is are all deviation things actually. So, let us keep it in mind purposefully actually that way. So, this delta delta E is uh, what we are doing here is partly automated minus k times x okay, plus this delta delta E p which is a pilot input actually. Okay. So, remember this is a four dimensional system. So, we have this gain matrix uh, and the single control input. So, that is where the pole placement can be very handy actually that way. So, we have this uh, gain matrix k we will we'll write it that way k 1, k 2, k 3, k 4 and then this pilot input will not bother actually so much pilot input is pilot is free to give whatever he wants to give actually. Okay. Once again if you want to automate the uh, automate the complete trajectory in other words uh, path planning and then all sort of things if you talk about there then this one also needs to be done in automatic way this uh, delta E p which is like pilot input basically okay. we will not bother about that in this class. Anyway, so okay, this k 1, k 2, k 3, k 4 is something that we need to find out actually. Okay. So, when you do this a minus b k then a minus b k turns out to be like this. Okay. So, if you have this b times k b is here b times k is a matrix it is a 4 by 1 this is 1 by 4. So, it will turn out to be 4 by 4 this is already 4 by 4. So, a minus b k if you do it turns out to be something like that actually. Okay. So, we will able to now design the gain matrix uh, to place the eigen values at the desired location following the pole placement philosophy okay. that is now very standard actually. So, what do you do I mean your ACL is known to you. So, you compute the like characteristic polynomial. So, that uh, that will lambda e minus ACL determinant equals to 0. So, that means, this uh, determinant uh, will throw ultimately a fourth order polynomial in terms of lambda. Okay. So, which will have coefficients a, b, c, d, e okay. remember fourth order polynomials will have uh, 5 coefficients. And these are uh, these are functions of uh, this uh, stability derivatives. I mean, a, b, c, d, e will come from these x u, x delta, z u, z delta. I mean, z w all sort of thing. Those are the number numerical values of that will dictate what values you get there actually. Okay. All right. So now let the desired characteristic roots be at uh, these locations: lambda one, lambda two, and lambda three, lambda four actually. Okay. So, lambda 1 lambda 2 turns out to be like this like these are so kind of specified actually okay. and lambda 3 lambda 4 is like that actually. Okay. Now, why you write this S p okay, typically is what we discussed before this lambda 1 lambda 2 can correspond to something like short period eigen values desired eigen values for short period dynamics and this p is can mean desired eigen values for figure dynamics. So, it is very cleanly you can divide these eigen value spectrum uh, to kind of branches uh, and then talk about okay this is my, my response for fugit and this is res my response for short period actually. But nonetheless this lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 lambda 4 are all available. So, we can formulate this characteristic polynomial now. Okay. So, this characteristic polynomial will throw a polynomial like that again. Okay. So, now you can now we equate the coefficients that means if I compare this polynomial with that I mean this uh, characteristic equation with that one or other the through polynomials actually. Okay. So, if I equate the coefficient of the two polynomials, I will get a equal to 1 because this is a and that is a equal to 1 here okay. and b equal to small b, c equal to small c like that actually. Okay. Okay. Maybe I forgot it actually. This is uh, like one bit print mistake. This is e equal to okay, small e also. There is one more equation actually. Okay. e equal to small e basically. Okay. Well, uh, let me just that way. 
okay the equation turns out to be equal to small e that way. So, this equation so if you see what the number of equations you have 1, 2, 3, 4 and then 5 equations and you have 5 unknowns actually. So, you can uh, solve for that and then what are the uh, right. Anyway, so that is uh, the, the equations and all once you put it together then it will uh, will uh, it will throw you some uh, I mean some polynomials and all we will uh, be able to solve this uh, this coefficients k 1 to k 4 actually in that way. Okay, so, one equation may turn out to be identity out of that and things like that actually. Anyway, so uh, if you I mean this is the generic procedure, but let us talk about a small uh, numerical uh, I mean example also to make our ideas more clear actually. So, this way this uh, let us talk about only short period dynamics. So, we really do not have to this uh, we do not have to bother about uh, figure it uh, also in, in the loop actually. So, short period dynamics is largely like uh, two variables. So, alpha and q okay, instead of uh, so instead of uh, going to w q I can also replace the w by alpha that is also another possibility actually. So, okay, alpha del delta alpha dot and delta q dot when I when I have this is a function of alpha and q that is how the short period dynamics uh, behave and this is given by that where the numbers are already available to us let us say the stability derivatives and all are given to with respect to a some specific uh, aircraft we and with respect to some desired uh, trim condition basically and some desired uh, position I mean this uh, uh, reference values and all that. So, if these numbers are available this is our A matrix and this is our B matrix actually and what we really need is that the airplane short period characteristic Eisen values should have this this Eisen values actually. Okay. Now, where does it come from I mean in a, in a classical location sense in all that. So, if you really let us say this is lambda 1 and lambda 2 then if you do lambda minus lambda 1 into lambda minus lambda 2. Okay, equal to 0 then it will give you lambda square plus 2 zeta omega n lambda okay, plus omega n square equal to 0 that way because lambda 1 lambda 2 are, are known to us actually. Now, this zeta and, zeta and omega n they we know that they can come from uh, time domain specifications and all that. So, if, if the pilot wants a some sort of a settling time T s which is that is the good for his handling quality or or in this particular case the short period should die down within certain spe certain specified settling time then obviously, this is 4 by zeta omega n. Okay, this is one restriction the other one will come from overshooting and all that actually. So, if you start from these, these specifications you will be able to compute lambda 1 and lambda 2 and once this lambda 1 lambda 2 are known these are nothing but that actually. So, is no is a, okay. So, somebody has, has given us that this is what it should be actually. Okay. But if you compute the Eisen values of this A matrix only then it will not fall on there. Okay, then how do you do that? So, then we go ahead and uh, do this closed loop uh, matrix. So, we will design this. So, we have the beautiful technique of control design with us. So, we will do that. Okay, we'll hold on a second. We will operate that uh, in the form of uh, u equal to minus k x. So, the closed loop matrix will turn out to be a minus p k. So, it will be like this actually. Okay. So, characteristic polynomial turns out to be like that and when you do this uh, desired characteristic equation Okay, from here okay, that will turn out to be like that. Okay. So, obviously, this uh, this uh, this one does not give us any more uh, kind of information 1 equal to 1, but this one gives uh, this coefficient is equal to 4.2 that coefficient what you get here is nothing but 9. So, if you equate the 2 that is uh, what it is and solving if you solve these two linear equations you will get the gains uh, like that actually. Okay. So, the state feedback control law ultimately turns out to be delta e or rather delta delta e equal to minus k times x. So, this uh, uh, this is uh, like delta delta e is equal to minus k times x and this is minus k 1 k 2 times x, x is nothing but delta alpha and delta q that is our x definition and k 1 k 2 are available here. So, if I substitute that then k 1 uh, okay, minus k 1 what you see minus k 1 is 2.03 that is where it comes 2.03 times delta alpha okay, and this uh, minus k 2 is uh, 1.318 so that is where delta q will come. And this one remains as it is that is where the pilot. So, the, if the pilot gives the command he will not feel the Eisen values of the original system he will feel the Eisen values of the desired system that means he will feel responses as if it is behaving that way. Okay. Right. 
So, that is good for uh, good for handling, I mean handling good for him to handle the aircraft actually that is how it is. All right. So, and many of the luxury cars are also driven that way by the way like for, for example, traction control system, ABS system and things like that there are many automatic control systems act in the, in the high end cars actually. So, you, you do not feel like uh, you are strained and all that many of the things are happen without your knowledge actually that way. All right. So, what is what about lateral stability augmentation system? This is something like this, so very similar, very parallel actually. So, this is BP, R and 5, if we put them together, but the problem here is this, this is like uh, both of the control that is Eldon and Rudder are equally effective, that, that means uh, they are uh, equally fast actually. So, I cannot neglect one over the other per se. Okay. So, when I have to take account both of the things together actually, that is the only difference probably here. And uh, once you have multiple control input, we also know that uh, that uh, pole placement design techniques we have to do something else uh, to to make that design work. And that something else is nothing but control allocation actually. Okay. And one simple allocation is something like this. Anyway, the the control philosophy is uh, same. U equal to U A automatic part and then pilot input part. But this automatic part is not minus k times x per se. But let's do minus c times k times x where C is a row vector C 1 C 2 which will combine these two effects actually that way. And the constraints on C 1 C 2 is something like this C 1 plus C 2 should be 1 and C 1 over C 2 should be over this one which is actually dictated by their maximum limits actually uh, how much they can deflect and things like that. So, if you assume that uh, the effectiveness uh, does not uh, change uh, from the with respect to the magnitude of deflection that means, the control uh, control and influence numbers whatever numbers you see here they remain constant then dividing and assuming a specific ratio is not bad actually okay, because you know this limit you know that limit. So, you kind of allocate that based on their maximum deflection levels actually yeah, that way. However, this C 1 plus C 2 should also remain 1 I mean and with respect to that you can select coefficients C 1 C 2 so that you can define a rho vector C basically and once you define rho vector C that is your kind of control variable control feedback that operates on that actually. So, what is your uh, closed loop uh, matrix? So, it is this time it is a minus b c k. So, and then hence a c l the closed loop system matrix turns out to be a minus b c k. So, the augmented characteristic equation is solved by using like a lambda a minus a sort of thing. And uh, in this case let us say the desired characteristics equation to the desired eigen values again. And the desired eigen values remember we are talking about lateral dynamics and if you remember lateral dynamics uh, which we also reviewed last class it consists of uh, this. Uh, directional divergence, spiral divergence uh, as well as dot roll motion actually. So, when you see this lambda 1 this can be a lambda from coming from directional divergence property point of view, lambda 2 can be spiral divergence property and then lambda 3, lambda 4 can have this uh, kind of a uh, this uh, dot roll motion dr stands for dot roll actually. I think there is a print mistake again here which is like uh, okay, times j actually. So, that is a that is a complex part part of it part of it actually. Okay. All right. So, this is uh, how it operates actually. So, again the philosophy is same once you know lambda 1 to lambda 2 up to lambda 3 lambda 4 we know the <coughs> characteristic polynomial again and that characteristic polynomial uh, will equate and get the gains actually that way. And uh, just to give a flavor of that we will consider only this p let us say delta p and uh, delta r part of it. So, we do not need to go for this fourth order polynomial and all that, but uh, I mean truly speaking you should work on this fourth order basically. Anyway, so if you if you see this delta p delta r only okay, and that is where this uh, this dot roll characteristics and all will come. Okay. So, this is how your control is again divided into two parts uh, automatic part and pilot input. So, automatic part turns out to be like that. Remember C 1 C 2 is decided a priori. So, there is no confusion no no need of solving for C 1 C 2. Okay, what you solve for is k 1 to k 1 and k 2 not c 1 c 2. Okay. So, that is uh, that is how we, we need to solve actually. <coughs> All right. So, the characteristic equation for this system turns out to be like that it is a simple second order polynomial the so, lambda square uh, lambda and then then bunch of constant numbers actually. 
So, that will be equal to 0 where uh, C1 L C and uh, N C and all you can define for further simplicity actually. So, these numbers will play roles here. The result characteristic equation again lambda 1 and lambda 2 you know. So, we can multiply and then try to equate the coefficient and things like that. Remember all these equating coefficients and all you can also use this uh, this Bass group approach and then this uh, Eckermann's formula and things like that. That is also a possibility. So, no need to really go struggle uh, I mean by hand basically that way. All right, before we stop, uh, we will also go through a little cruise control uh, system uh, that is another application. So, in other words, the when the aircraft is in uh, uh, is flying on a cruise mode, okay, there is nothing like pilot input actually that pilot input and see the whatever we have been doing here that okay, partly it is pilot input, partly it is automatic and things like that. Let us combine this together and give the control input directly actually. Okay, that you can interpret that way or you can interpret oh I have got a closed loop system already. Okay, this is uh, where, where is that let me go back to that. Okay, I have got a closed loop system already. So, let me also design this part of it or in automatic sense. I mean the that means this uh, this control input whatever you are telling we can interpret that okay we can we will design this control input directly there is no pilot input per se pilot input is 0 actually in that sense. Okay or that is embedded into this k matrix basically what I mean actually. Okay. Or you can design this or this matrix is already available SEL is already there. So, now this uh, this part also we need to design over SEL actually. So, either way when, so what I will interpret is I will design the control input we will I mean uh, in this class we will assume that we will design this control input u directly not through this this split up mechanism actually. Okay. So, that is uh, that is what we need to do there actually. Okay, so, cruise control system again uh, to revisit a little bit we can use this as uh, like attitude uh, control to maintain pitch roll and heading angles and altitude hold to maintain desired altitude. We can also design a speed control actually and uh, typically this speed control is kind of uh, design since it is designed in a decoupled manner it is never put it together because this is slow dynamics actually and the attitude and uh, other things will be uh, like fast dynamics attitude and attitude rate will be fast dynamics. So, these are this is typically designed in a separate manner actually. So, here we will this we will uh, use this LQR uh, type of uh, philosophy okay. and then this as, you, as we discussed uh, this is like this is the problem that we are talking here and this is the solution approach that you are talking here actually. Okay. So, we, we just solve this uh, Ricard equation and then compute the control uh, in other words compute the gain matrix directly that way actually. So, the role stabilization system we will uh, this is an example where you, where the we will discuss uh, stabilizing uh, uh, the role dynamics of a missile. So, that the guidance system can uh, can function properly remember for the guidance system of a missile is largely dependent on direction corrections. So, in other words uh, the, the, the corrections in terms of uh, pitch axis as well as uh, yaw axis actually. So, it, it should uh, it should turn vertically or it should uh, change its course direction and go somewhere to the towards the target actually. Now, once while we are doing that we really do not have to I mean the role should be stabilized actually. If the role is role mechanism is there first of all the part of the control effectiveness goes because uh, this remember this uh, this missile is actually symmetric about the role axis in two planes actually. So, once it becomes uh, symmetric in two planes the, the, the characteristics in pitch and yaw are no different actually. So, if it starts uh, rolling and all that uh, because partly it will it will correct in yaw partly it will correct in pitch and then keeps on doing that then it goes to this uh, kind of a oscillatory mode sort of thing and it, uh, the guidance becomes difficult to handle actually it uh, and you do not need that actually. So, for so what is done uh, what is normally done is the role stabilization. So, you stabilize the role and then ap apply the pitch and yaw to have the guidance correction that way. So, how do you stabilize the role? And this is uh, these are the like uh, control surfaces here uh, partly it can be there in the front or the around the CG and partly it can also be there in the tail these are called fins actually. And this can be like all movable surfaces this is not partly it will movable and all that the total thing will kind of move up and down sort of thing. Okay. So, uh, anyway, so that also there is a conflict that which role uh, which axis uh, I mean uh, depending on the role angle you have to separate it out this uh, pitch and uh, yaw fins and things like that. Ultimately, you can decompose these 4 fins into 3 fins like an aircraft then you discover oh, I have got uh, like uh, aileron and then rudder and uh, elevator things like that. 
So, let me use this aileron uh, primarily for role stabilization and the dynamics turns out to be like that, where L p is defined uh, like this and L delta is defined like that. So, these are stability derivatives which are available to us actually. And the cost function I will select it that way, because my, uh, uh, my main aim is to arrest phi and arrest p. So, phi should be as small as possible and p should be as small as possible. And then delta, uh, while doing that delta should also be small actually, delta i, I cannot demand too much actually that way. <laughs> and theoretically also remember this, uh, this coefficients r or whatever you are talking, it cannot be 0, it needs to be positive definite actually. <coughs> okay. All right, so that is uh, how I select the cost function. And once I select the cost function, my Q and R matrices are available. Q is like that, R is like that. A and B is already available to me. So now I go back and substitute that in the Riccardi matrix equation, matrix Riccardi equation. So then you remember P matrix needs to be symmetric and positive definite solution. So first we assume a symmetric matrix, and then we carry out this. Uh, this when you plug in back, this A B is known to us, Q and R known to us, and then P is defined like that we will end up with this, these three equations actually. Okay. Once we will end up with these three equations, there are multiple solutions, you have to eliminate one, uh, maybe ultimately we want um, positive definite solution and all. So, ultimately we will be able to find a positive definite P matrix, that is the message actually. Okay. So, once you find it, then uh, this k it turns out to be like that actually. Okay. This is this is the gain matrix is R inverse B transpose P, so that will be like that actually. Okay. So, the optimal control what will be needed to uh, act on this system is like that and this P1, P2 all that solutions are available to us from this equation solution and all that and from uh, I mean this delta M x is also a known information, so that is also available to us and this gain matrix gain components this, this, this into that will turn out to be K1 and this into that will turn out to be K2 and things like that. So, this entire mechanism will operate based on that and then we are done actually that is how the role stabilization can take place with the appropriate information of p and q, the, I mean phi and p. So, all these remember, all these things assume that we have the state field, I mean state value information available, so that we can make our control operate based on the gain and all that actually. Okay. And also remember uh, that MATLAB, those of you who use MATLAB, uh, you can actually directly get a solution of this Riccardi equation and all that by using these functions LQR and LQR2, these are continuous time Riccardi equations, uh, functions already available to you actually, you can take help of that. So, to summarize uh, the application of automatic fight control system can lead to variety of advantages, it can be used for stability augmentation, cruise control, landing aids as well as what I told automatic path planning and guidance actually, we can also talk many things on that. Both classical as well as modern control techniques can be utilized, but modern control techniques can deal with MIMO plants more naturally and more effectively actually. All right. So, with that message I will stop this class, thanks a lot.